So you don't know? I don't know. Marinette paced around her room in a wild panic. Tiki was worriedly sitting on a pillow on her bed. Well, Tiki didn't continue. She didn't know how to. How could she help Marinette when neither of them knew what to say or how Marinette was feeling? Marinette sighed. Akumas are so much easier to deal with than feelings. Tiki's lips pulled into a tight smile. You've said that before, she said. I know. They are, though, Marinette replied. Tiki sighed. Okay, let's do a little rundown. Why are you thinking of breaking up with Aiden? Marinette's expression twisted. I... I feel like... You know, distance made it feel different. And with Shot Noir and Matchmaker, that complicates things, Marinette said slowly. And Adrian too, she said. Glumly, Tiki almost wanted to roll her eyes. For the record, the two people that were complicating Marinette's relationship were, gasp, the same person. How was, how could you just like not laugh at that? What do you mean it feels different? Do you feel like now you're really living differently in separate lives? Or do you think that your feelings have diminished? Tiki asked. Marinette bit her bottom lip. Um, both, I think, she paused. I love them, you know. It was a different type of love with Adrian. Adrian was like a hopeless love at first sight. A Aiden is a slow, friends first kind of love. And I love him. I just, it might be different from how I loved him back in America, Marina admitted. In complete honesty, she didn't know if she loved Adrian and Aiden anymore. He was wonderful, funny, sweet, caring, and still the same person she knew. It was just the distance and the other people that were starting to make her question whether or not she loved them now. If you love someone, you shouldn't be thinking of anyone else. So if Marinette was thinking of Shot Noir or Adrian, did, did that mean that she didn't love Aiden? Oh god. The talk, it was making her head spin. Marinette took a seat at her desk and rubbed her temples. Nothing was making sense. Her feelings, her actions of inviting Adrian to her most sacred and secret spot, the possible stronger Akumas, everything was going crazy, especially her. How did it feel with Aiden in the beginning? Marinette didn't say anything. She was preoccupied with you know, trying to think back over a year ago? Well, honestly, like a fairy tale. Like it was unreal and a dream. It was wonderful, but it was like a fantasy, Marinette sighed. Tiki clicked her tongue softly and smiled. Do you think it was meant to last? She asked tentatively. It was a hard question to ask and receive. No one wanted to think about a breakup, but it was important to know that a lot of the time, that was what was inevitable. It was important to be realistic in a relationship. As much as it hurt, sometimes you had to take a step back from all the bliss and woe. I... No? Marinette's voice broke. It wasn't. My relationship... It's not meant to last, is it? Tiki flew up and began to drag Marinette towards her bed. Sluggishly, the black-haired girl shuffled her feet and landed on the bed. I wasn't even sure of how much I liked him in the beginning, Marinette said with a small voice. She pulled her knees up and curled into a tight ball. High school relationships aren't made to last, are they? Marinette said in a small voice. She pulled her knee. Tears had begun to fall, and Marinette made no action to stop them or wipe them away from her face. You can't set too high expectations, Tiki said. It's not like she could lie to Marinette and say that, you know, hers will be different. It'll last forever. 
because that wasn't true. In the end, that would hurt Marinette. She had to be honest. We're just, we're just gonna break up, aren't we? Marinette said, her voice wavering. Tiki sighed. That's still unknown. The red Kwame leaned over her owner's shoulder. If a breakup is gonna happen, should I do it now? I mean, it would save us the rest of the heartache and maybe arguments, especially with how I'm feeling right now. Better just to end it if we're all good right now, Marinette said sharply. Tiki gasps. No! She cried out, very shocked that Marinette would think that was the solution. No! That is not the right course of action. Not every relationship ends in a split, she said quickly, wanting to shut down whatever the Chinese Parisian girl was thinking of doing right now. But high school relationships do. Everyone says so. We're too young. Too young to make it work. Too young to know about real love. Too young and, and too many changes, Marinette countered. Kiki shook her head. Just because people say that doesn't make it gospel. Plenty of relationships last well throughout high school, college, and right into marriage until old age. Marinette scoffed. Are you trying to convince me not to break up with them? Because when we started this conversation, you asked me if we were meant to last. Tiki shook her head. I'm trying to make sure that you don't make any rash decisions. Right now, your emotions are running rampant. And if you are going to do something right now, in this moment, without thinking it through, you might regret... Three knocks were heard from the rooftop, and Marina and Tiki looked up sharply. They looked at each other again as three more raps were heard. Probably shot noir, Tiki whispered. Marinette nodded and wrapped a pink blanket around herself. She had already changed for bed, and going out in an almost winter Paris air in just a tank top and black plaid pajama pants was a, was a very bad idea. To say it was cold was an understatement. Tiki ducked under the covers as Marinette opened the trap door and climbed up to the balcony. Hello, Shot Noir. What are you doing at my house again? Marinette smiled with a brow raised at the cat in question. He sheepishly rugged the back of his neck. He was perched on the balcony railing like a real cat, and if he was anyone else, Marinette would probably be panicking over whether or not they'd fall. However, Shot Noir did this often, and he wouldn't fall. Even if he did, he could catch himself and land on all fours like a real cat. I just wanted to say hi. He said. Marinette laughed a little and rolled her eyes. Chat Noir smiled at her, and then his expression changed. Under the mask, his eyes turned down and his head tilted slightly to the left. Princess, are you okay? He asked. Concern was clear in his voice. Marinette wiped her eyes quickly and felt the residual tears and her lips tighten into a line. Great. She had forgotten that she was crying and didn't wipe off her face. Smart move. Yeah, I'm fine, she lied, hoping that he'd leave it alone. But she knew he wouldn't. Chant Noir would never let someone who was hurting or crying or just feeling the slightest bit down continue on like that. For one, he knew it could attract an Akuma, but also Chant Noir was a very kind-hearted person with a good heart that would always help. Marinette guessed that even outside of the mass, he'd act like this, helping people and cheering them up. Maybe if he didn't own the miraculous in the first place, whoever he was, he was probably a good guy and would be trying to do something about it. Are you really, though? Shad asked, hopping off the railing. Marinette's lips pursed to a side and she looked down. She couldn't really answer that question. I don't know, she admitted. The superhero, at least the one in their costume, frowned. Why? Shad asked. Marinette sighed. Boy troubles, she said. 
Shah Noir's um, eyes went immediately wide. Oh, sorry, I don't mean to pry, but if you need someone to talk to, I can listen, he offered. Marinette nodded. It might help. He could offer a guy's opinion on the matter. Guys and girls literally process things differently, so maybe it would help. Plus, he can offer an unbiased perspective on the whole situation, since he didn't really know who she was talking about. Well, I have a boyfriend, she started. Marinette was looking more towards the sky, so she didn't notice Shot Noir tense up. And he's so wonderful and very sweet, but I just... I don't know. It doesn't feel the same. He doesn't live here. It's a long-distance relationship, and it has been for the past couple of months, and I, I feel like that puts a strain on every on everything, Marinette continued. Charlotte Noir nodded silently, just carefully listening to which she very much appreciated. Perhaps talking about it might clear her mind and help her figure out how the heck she was feeling. Also, we're in high school and relationships in high school aren't built to last. Honestly, I was panicking earlier and thought that maybe we should just break up now rather than later. But my friend kind of snapped me out of that. And then we heard you knock and... Yeah. Marinette didn't know how to explain it all. Especially since Shot was one of the reasons she was thinking of ending it with Aiden. Ouch. That sentence felt like a stab to her heart. You shouldn't end it just because most teen relationships finish off with a breakup. Yeah, that happens most of the time, but it doesn't have to happen all the time. I think a big part of high school relationships is trying not to break up, at least more than adults at least. It's about beating the odds, right? If you give in and believe it won't last, then it won't. You have to defy the odds, because it can be so real and it's so worth it, Shot advised. Marinette sharply inhaled. Yeah, that's another problem. It doesn't feel real. Like, even while we were in the same place, it felt more like a dream, like a fairy tale I just somehow landed in. It felt like we were the perfect movie couple. No arguments, no disagreements, no nothing. Like, almost we were faking it, even though we weren't. It was perfect. But it made it feel faked and planned. I mean, it's almost 10 months now, and we never had a fight, not even one little one. It may seem all good and perfect, but it feels like a dream, a perfect dream that would never last. Don't you agree that a real relationship means knowing about each other's flaws and helping them through it and adapting to them? I don't know his and he doesn't know mine. It's not going to last if we're all smiles and sunshine and grand gestures all the time. And because of that, and the fact that I'm here now, it doesn't feel like real love. Real love is small moments and little things. It feels different from this. Or at least it feels different to me. This isn't the kind of love that I want. I don't know if that makes any sense. It's so hard to try and explain and figure out my feelings. I just, I don't know if I want my relationship to be like this. The words were just pouring out of her and Marinette finally breathed. Does it feel like puppy love? Like just a little too fluffy and perfect, Shot Noir said gently. Marinette nodded her, head run her ha nodded her head running a hand through her hair. Yeah, she said softly. It helped, being able to just spill everything, even if it didn't make sense. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I will give you my advice and you can run with it however you want. But I don't think the relationship is working out the way you want it to. It's not bad, nor is it hurting you though, but it's not bringing you any more happiness. If you feel that's not what you want, it's okay to take a break. It's also okay to talk to him and maybe get something changed. Marinette leaned against the railing inside, looking out towards the sky. 
I know I can talk to him, but I feel like we're not meant to be. I don't think he's the person I'm destined for. We're different people, we live in different places, and they say opposites attract, but it's not like we're complete mirror versions of each other. Honestly, I think you're right. I don't know exactly what I want from the relationships. I just don't feel like it's what I want for the rest of my life. And with the distance, I feel like we're just living too separately from each other. We text all the time, but it's not the same thing as being with each other in real life. Marinette thought out loud. I think we might need a break. It hurt, honestly, to say those words. It felt like a snake was tightening around her neck, but in complete honesty, it felt like what needed to happen. Aiden was so kind and sweet and the best first boyfriend she could ever ask for, but he wasn't the forever. Yeah, maybe it complicated things slightly as she was talking to the boy who was one of the reasons she started going down this path. You know, the uh, maybe we should break up route in the first place. But it also put it in perspective. She couldn't have a conversation like this with Aiden. Not because he wouldn't listen or anything, it just... That's just not how they were. They were boyfriend and girlfriend, not really best friends, who could tell each other everything that was bothering them. Maybe that was the problem. Above all else, Marinette wanted her boyfriend to be her best friend, not just love interests. Even when they started dating, they, they weren't even that close of friends. He didn't even know much about her life in Paris. She talked idyllically about it, more about the tourist attractions, not her real life with Akumas, Lilas, Chloe's, even Adrian for that matter. It felt like now everything with Aiden was becoming was becoming more and more I love you, I miss you, and not anything about her actual life. She couldn't text him about little things that happened throughout the day. He, of course, would listen, but it just didn't feel right. Like they hadn't reached the level of closeness to sprout random thoughts to each other. I won't tell you what to do or how to go about this situation, but I can tell you that I have your back and I promise I will come and help you and talk to you. If you choose to end things or just wait them out, I'm here to listen, or maybe distract you if you need it," Shot Noir said solemnly. All traces of the goofy, jokester smile was gone, and in its place, a kind, caring, serious, and loving smile that said, I'm here. It was rare to see Shot Noir so dead serious. Even in fights, the cat in black was laughing and sprouting puns. The only time she saw this side of him was as Marinette. And if she said that didn't cement her choice, then she'd be lying. That's what she needed. A person who would be her best friend and listen. Aiden was a great boyfriend. But honestly, in the best friend department, he didn't stack up. They'd probably gone in too fast. Thank you, Shot Noir. Marinette said softly, sending him a smile. He began to rub one arm with another. Of course, he said. I should probably leave and let you sleep. I'll come back tomorrow night if you want to talk to someone or need a distraction. Marinette nodded and the superhero crouched on the railing and waved off. Marinette watched him jump off and soar across Paris. So, are you sure? Tiki asked when Marinette was back in her room. Yeah, I am, Marinette said firmly. I promise it's not a rash decision. I've thought about it, I've talked about it, and I think it's the best course of action, Marinette said. Tiki nodded. It would be a lie to say she didn't think this would be the outcome. Aiden was nice. But he wasn't right for Marinette, and Tiki knew that. Now, how do you break up with someone? 